Good morning, good morning, good morning. God is good. God is great. It is a great day. Period. Um, this morning, I want to share something with you for those of you that are going through some things. Um, and you have not been doing what the Lord has asked us to do. Um, a lot of times we make excuses not to praise him. We make excuses not to um, or read our word. We make excuses not to give him the honor that he is due. Uh, and the reason why we do that is because we're going through. That's what a lot of us say. We're going through some stuff right now. And the Lord knows because he knows we're human. Well, if you know me, then you know that God is not stupid and he knows he made you human. And we've talked about that before. Um, but I want to share something with you this morning. In the uh, in Snowflake, if you read it, there's a town that I um, placed Snowflake in, the story around, and it's Noonan, Georgia. And in Noonan, Georgia right now, there is a mother and a father, a pastor of a church. And on Sunday, I might not have the day right, but this week, okay, they just passed. And somebody can help me tell the story um, because let me tell you what I got excited about. I want to share what I got excited about. Uh, so this uh, couple, this pastor and first lady, a co-pastor, um, lost two sons two children uh and as i was going through hey pastor colton she she probably can tell me what day those young men died or tell y'all so that way y'all know what i'm talking about no i ain't making up nothing just to give y'all a word this morning um but anyways two children they lost and so I was reading because I was trying to get more details because my mother said, because if you read Snowflake, also I use Miss Perlane because Miss Perlane means a lot to me. I have not seen Miss Perlane in years, but I have a story to tell about Miss Perlane. So when my mother said that she thought that they might have been Miss Perlane grandchildren or great grands, I'm not sure. Um, but she said she thought. And so um, when she said that, that shook up something in my spirit. Um, not because I had written Snowflake, but because I had written Snowflake under the anointing. And because the Lord, good morning, Nikisha, uh, and the Lord had spoke to me. So listen to this, the person, the people I'm talking about lost two kids. When, as I was scrolling to see if it was Miss Perlan's great-grandkids or grandkids or children or whatever, as I was scrolling, I came across the daddy's post. When I tell you I went to hollering and screaming in the car on my way home, look, after I read this post, the man said, Lord, if you are allowing it, you're going to give me the strength to go through it. I, I, that might not mean nothing to nobody. <laughs> but when I tell you that that stirred up something in my spirit, because I realized today, I realized on yesterday, God is not stupid. He is not allowing us to go through stuff and not providing ways and provisions for us to get through this stuff. He is not allowing things to happen in our lives and not allow, allowing all, provision also. He didn't ask you to do nothing that he's not going to provide for. He's not asking you to go out here and um, on your own and be like a blind, I guess, bird box this thing. Your faith must be like bird boxing. But you got to trust in him with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding and go and take your behind out there and do what he called you to do and stop making excuses. If that man who lost two children can say, Lord, if you are allowing it, you're going to allow me to give me the strength to make it through this. Lord, if you are allowing this, you're going to give me the strength to make it through. Then I uh, stalked the page only because I wanted to see what else he was saying. Because I was like, then this right here is serious. <laughs> I, I scrolled up before one of the sons died. Because one died on the scene and the other um, died later. But there was a prayer that he had asked other people to join in and pray. Good morning, everybody. He had asked me to pray. Ask others to pray. Because he said, please pray this prayer with me. So he had put the scriptures and he had put these uh, um, 
declarations and added his son's name. Asking the Lord to heal that one that was still alive. I'm not going to be saying their names on the thing, but I do know the names. But he had asked us to pray that. So I joined in with the prayer the first time I saw the post. But when the Lord did not allow his son to live. See, our prayers are answered in different ways. Some of us, when our prayers are not answered right, we go to quitting and crying and hollering and screaming. That's what we do. The Lord is not stupid. He know that you're a human, that you're going to go through seasons where you're going to cry. He know that you're going to go through seasons where you're not going to feel so good about it. He know that you're going to go up and down, up the mountain, down the mountain, to the valley. He already know that. He's not stupid. I don't know why we play God like he is stupid. He is not stupid. God is an intelligent God. The reason why he said not to lean to your own understanding, because guess what? You're going to be the one acting stupid. You're going to be the one, not him. The reason why he said do not lend to your own understanding is because he knew that in your flesh, you wasn't going to be making it. You was going to have a hard time. You was going to process this stuff different. So when I was reading that pastor stuff, oh, glory to God, I said, oh, father, I know that man hurting. I ain't crazy. I know that man did not sit somewhere having no party because both of his sons is gone. And, and you, I know that. I know that and God know that. But that man opened up. I'm telling you, he typed on that thing. And I'm pretty sure he's saying it to people. <laughs> he said, if you allow me to go through this, you're going to give me the strength. If somebody don't feel that in their spirit this morning. See, some of us worry about money. We worry about our financial blessings. We worry about... Uh, when we going to get this and my health is this or whatever. But I'm telling y'all to this morning, to today, if you don't start leaning and trusting on the Lord, baby, sister, brother, dude, cousin, whoever you are to me, you going to be in trouble. Because it's some hurtful stuff going on around here. It's some stuff that's going to snatch you out your comfort zone. But if you don't get in your word and stop making these doggone excuses, not to get in your word and read your word every day. If you don't start praying like you ain't never prayed before, baby, this stuff you talking about, this stuff you crying about, this stuff you going through, baby, you ain't going to make it. I'm telling you today. Truth is, her, you're not going to make it. Because there are some things that you have not even uh, dealt with right now. Um, there are some things. Thank you, Pastor, this morning. Thank you, Pastor. There are some things. Because he's not stupid. That's why he left it. Thank you for helping me this morning. There are some things. And I ain't talking about no crying about somebody that wasn't no good for you. No way. I ain't talking about no crying. I ain't talking about all that right now. I'm talking about some real, real deal life situations. The other day, my brother and I was having a conversation uh, uh, about cremating my father. The other day. Uh, two days ago. Because uh, my father is now in hospice. The other day, we was talking and having a meeting. Because a lot of times, we don't like to plan stuff. Uh, not that we're killing our daddy off. But we're not in no financial situation where we can just be throwing out money if something happened. We, we ain't in that. We don't have that like that because we wasn't prepared. I don't know why we wasn't prepared because life tells us to get prepared. Okay? Life shows us that you don't need to be caught slipping. But we wasn't, we wasn't prepared for that. And so we're not prepared for what's to come. So we said, well, we need to put some stuff in place. Because God never promised us that we could keep nobody. That's in the word. He never told us nobody going to die. That's not true. His word ain't said that. So in his word, he tells us that he gives and he takes. Blessed be the name. See, he come back right back with a praise. Come right back because he's not stupid. That's what I'm trying to tell y'all this morning. God is not stupid. For those of you that have bad doctor reports, for those of you that are facing financial situations, this furlough thing, the reason why I will not get on the bandwagon and give the devil any room uh, or any words out of my mouth concerning that is because the Lord will provide. I know that everything works out for the good of them that that love the Lord and that go according to his will, his purpose. And so you that are not 
uh, in his will that are not going according to his purpose. Yeah, when you face situations, you're going to fall apart. But there's a peace and a comfort when you follow him. There's a peace and a comfort when you know that your father is going to work it out. Even if that father who gave that prayer asked us all to join in with him. And I'm sure that other people joined in with him. But God decided to take that baby on. And he already had taken one of the sons. This isn't a matter of a couple of days, a day or so. He already, the Lord had already taken one son. He took the other son. So now they are prepping for a funeral for two children. <laughs> I said, Father, if that that's how I know that man is in the word. That's how I know that man is not playing around when it comes to God. Because in order for him to say that his spirit man has to rise up to the top. You cannot be talking about that when I'm telling you, your flesh going to come out. I'm just telling you when you don't lost two kids. Some of y'all be cursing God. Some of y'all going to be stomping. Some of y'all going to turn your back on him. Some of y'all going to do all that. He never promised us that we can keep nobody. He ain't never promised us that. But see, we mad, we angry. And there are going to be some days when that pastor is going to get angry. There are going to be some days when that man is going to go against some stuff. But guess what the case going to be, honey? The case going to be is that he's going to shift him around. The Holy Spirit going to catch him then because that's how the Holy Spirit is. When you need a comforter, that's what God sent him for. So right when he get to them points, right when he get in them sinking, them sunken places, I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit going to send the comforter again, snatch him him up and hold him in his arms and when i tell you when god hold you in his arms it ain't nothing like oh it ain't nothing like the love of jesus because he knew that that was coming and so i'm telling you today you might not have lost no children you might not you might have lost your job you, you might be trying to figure out now how to get some food let me tell you something the birds are being fed you think the lord not gonna feed you that's what we gotta stand on we can't keep standing on what our friend said our friend's situation our friend diagnosis our friend said that when they had cancer. No, I'm speaking over everybody that's attached to me because I have the authority to. Somebody said the other day, baby, stuff getting bad. I said, yeah, but the word of God said it. I ain't got nothing to do but to lean on what the Lord said. The Lord, and we're not blind. He didn't leave us stupid. He got the revelation already out there. He already told us what's going to happen. He told us, though, that we must give thanks in everything everything that look says chan this is what the holy ghost is doing now honey with me and you gonna probably tap out we probably gonna be anything together baby this is what the holy ghost doing because see we ain't got time we don't have time uh we don't, i'm telling y'all we don't have time you can get a bad report after i hit this button finish I'm just telling you, you get a bad doctor's report, but you got to walk in that authority. You got to walk in that anointing. You got to know that whatever God said and do what, say what he said. Don't be saying what you think he said. Go back into the word. Go back into the word. Get the word and speak those things. When a situation was happening at this hospital, and I'm finna go, but I'm finna tell you something that the Lord did. A friend came and got me to go pray for somebody that had already been pronounced dead in this hospital where I work. I already said that's the end of that. I know it took us about two to three minutes to get up them steps. I'm telling you, running like asthma patients. Running. So we get up there to them steps. So I said, I need my oil. Another friend went to go get my oil. I took the oil. Now, they already saying they're giving up on the man, whatever. He still, from my understanding, was still hanging on. But they was giving up on him, giving him just a few more minutes. I anointed his head because the Lord said that I could do that. Now, what did I expect? I expected God's will to be done. And that's what I pray for your will to be done. They even was talking to me and telling me that the lady had just lost her baby. They had just lost a kid, a little baby. And so I said, oh, Father, this is not good. This is not good. The Lord is not stupid. You know, we don't like this stuff. So I said, oh, Father, this is not good. So anyway, I put the, the oil on the man's head. I prayed and whatever. And guess what I did? I said, well, I'm going to go because God's will will be done. In less than five to ten minutes, they was coming back down there to get me to tell me that the man was speaking. 
and that I needed to come back upstairs. <laughs> Glory to God. I needed to come back upstairs. When I got back upstairs, all the man kept saying is there's something warm going through my body. I, let me tell you something. God is real. God is real. The man said there's something warm going in my body. They said he haven't even been talking. I said, glory, in that room, I started giving God some praise. In that room, I started thanking Jesus for what he's doing. Because he may not do everything that we ask him to do. Because it must be his will. His will. I had to pray his will, no matter what the situation looked like. I had to pray his will. And that's what we got to start doing, praying his will. So let me tell you what the man, all he kept saying was something warm going through my body. I left the man up there because guess what? I was just a vessel being used. Thank God you let me see it. So let me tell you something. I told y'all I walk around with this all. I told you my face shining now because I put it all over my face today. Because you'll never know what you're going to counter. Let me do my little stuff. But today, I just want to encourage some of y'all to lean to the strength of God, to hold fast to his word, to hold on to God's unchanging hand, to grip his anointing, to ask for his anointing to saturate you and help you to get through the day. Ain't nobody got time to be worried about no haters. Ain't nobody got time to be worried about what somebody got that you ain't got. It's so much stuff going on in this world right now. You got some neighbors that's a furlough. I'm just telling you that's furlough right now. We ain't got time. We ain't got time. We need to be able to be used Right now, like I told you, my dad is in hospice. I don't know what this going to turn out to be like, but I need to be used in my pain. I need to be used by God. So y'all go ahead. Now, I'm going to cut this off and still keep praising God, but y'all have a blessed day.